So in learning about internal calibration curves, we'll first open a data set, as you can see here, that was used to calculate based on an external calibration. So you have, of course, your peaks integrated, your peaks named, and your con concentrations based on your external calibration curve. Now, let's alter this so we use an internal calibration standard as well. So the first thing we'll do is go to our peak ID table and we'll open our ID table for that external standard. This should look very similar to what you've seen in the past. The only thing we're going to change now is from external to internal. And you'll notice we have an ISTD column that appears. And we'll now check the second peak and use that as an internal standard. So we'll change the name to ISTD. Now the last thing we need to do is to specify that that's internal standard number one. And then for the remaining peaks, specify that those are going to be based off of the internal standard number one. Now, should you have multiple internal standards, you can simply include a second one and check the box meaning it's the internal standard. And for instance, peak number four can reference internal standard number two. Well, in this case, peak number one references internal standard number one. Now to keep this simple, we're just going to limit this to one internal standard. And that's all we have to do. Now one additional thing we'll show is peak grouping. If you'd like to add the total values of certain peaks, you can do that by simply adding a peak group by clicking the button above. Now this peak group, you can name anything you want. For this example, we'll call it peak 1, 3, and 4. We'll select channel 1. As you can see in the peak names, there are no commas or other symbols. And that's it for the peak name. Now if you wanted to include that as a reference to the internal standard, you can. But in this case, we're simply using this peak group to just add up the total areas of those three peaks, the total heights, etc. The last thing we need to do is to tell which of these peaks is going to be included into that peak group. As you see, we've selected those with leaving out the internal standard, so that will not be included in the totaling. At this point, we're ready to save, and we'll just simply call this an ISTD ID table. So we'll save that, and we can close it. The other thing we'll need to change is our calibration curve. So we'll open that, and we'll open the existing external calibration curve. And notice 0.5 and 0.1, excuse me, 0.5 and 1 mg per mil are used for the two concentrations. So now we're going to change this to an internal standard. And as before, we'll learn by opening an ID table that we just created. In doing so, it's going to clear the current table. And we'll select that ISTD ID table we just created. And now what we see is it has named the peaks that were in there and of course has left out the ISTD and it is also included peak 124 which is the total of the first, second, and fourth peaks. Now, if we of course don't want to include that in a calibration curve, we'll simply delete it. Now the only thing we need to do is of course enter in those concentrations for each of the standards and each of the peaks. And the unit migs per mil. Now if we double click, we can get our cursor and highlight and hit Control C, Control V to paste, and Control V to paste. Now if we scroll over, we'll notice the only real difference is that we have a new column, ISTD number, and that just tells us in this calibration that we are referring each of these three peaks to internal standard number one, which happens to be peak number two. We now can save this calibration curve, ISTD calibration, and save, and we can now close it. Now, we'll go to the recalculation sequence, 
and as you can see we already have our particular sequence listed as this was used to calculate the external calibration. Now if this were a different sequence we can simply click and highlight down right click to delete and now we have a blank sequence. We then can open the one we want to use click open and now it fills in the information that was supplied when they ran the data and we will fill in the rest. The first section, the type, if we highlight down and right click, we can say standard number one is the first two lines, as you see here. The next two lines are standard two, standard two, the next two lines, and then the unknowns are the next two lines. Once we click OK, it fills that in. The peak ID table, we'll go ahead and open our ISTD ID table. We'll open our calibration method that we created, the ISTD calibration. And just as before, for mode, we'll select new and then add for the rest of the calibration points. And of course, for unknowns, we leave those blank. Now the data processing method, as we already have integrated our peaks, we do not need to include this. Now the last thing we need to enter in, if we scroll over, is of course the amount of our ISTD. For example, let's put 0.8 and we can highlight down for each of them and say the internal standard is 0.8. Now before we run to recalculate the sequence, let's quickly take a look at our concentrations as they are based on the external calibration curve. So 0.8 0.6, 0.5, and a very, very small number. As you can see, our fourth peak is extremely small. And that's for unknown number one. So let's go to the recalculation sequence and press run. Now it's going to recalculate based on that internal standard. And now, if we go back, we see that our quantities, of course, have increased because our internal standard, as we've said, it is 0.8, slightly larger. And of course, our internal standard, peak number two, is no longer giving us a quantity as that's a standard now. In addition, you'll see the peak group below list the three different peaks that are included, their values, and the total of each. Now, if you wanted to, of course, create a report, you just simply need to add the quantity column if it's not already in there to show that. And with all data that is run, as you open it at a later date, you have your calibration method, your peak ID, and such, so that you can always look back and see how this data was calculated. If we double click on the ISTD ID for the peak ID table, we'll notice, of course, that we have an ISTD number one, and peak number two is that particular ISTD. As well as the calibration method, it shows that we have an ISTD number. So, in coming back to this data at a later date, we can repeat the analysis and repeat the calculations.